Hello again, coming up next on 7 News. The flood report labelled slow by critics with details on buybacks and land swaps still to come. A proposal to renovate the Port Macquarie break wall, but is there evidence to support that? Investigations underway after a house fire in Ganelabar takes the life of a woman. The charity run to the Gold Coast for mental health. The importance of a squash tournament upgraded to a higher ranked event. And in the national news, Sydney wins the battle for the NRL Grand Final and the massive meth hall in Sydney that has busted open a drug syndicate worth $750 million. This is 7 News, the voice of the coast. Tonight, critics speak of the flood report's arrival and want more information on buybacks. A request for evidence if a break wall upgrade is needed in Port Macquarie. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, a one-year deal keeps the NRL grand final in Sydney and Sydney police bust a crime syndicate with a massive drug haul. 7 News begins now. Good evening. Flooded residents believe the independent inquiry has raised more questions than answers. The report confirmed buybacks and land swaps will be introduced, but did not provide any detail on who would be eligible, while local leaders have slammed the release, calling it way too slow. The flood inquiry is out, and it's been met with frustrated locals who aren't mincing their words. Sam Payne, 7 News. The Australian Medical Association believes medical centres in the Northern Rivers have reached crisis point. We cross live now to Sam Payne with the latest on this. And Sam, you discussed how dire the circumstances are with the head of the New South Wales AMA. I did, Maddie. Dr Michael Bonning said there are two major issues. Firstly, the ability to provide a workforce and major care. And secondly, the government's changes to the distribution priority area rules, meaning doctors can move from rural towns to larger areas and still access the same incentivised pay packet. He said changes need to happen now. It has to be an absolute priority in the next six to 12 months. Otherwise, we'll see many practices fall over and no longer be able to keep their doors open. The ball is now in the state government's court to see what they will do. Thanks for the update, Sam. Sam Payne there, live from Ballina tonight. More information will be requested from the state government regarding the proposed upgrades to the Port Macquarie break wall. There's concerns that any work will ruin a world-famous surf break and needlessly remove 14 trees. Outraged and demanding answers, Port Macquarie's surfing fraternity has today backed a motion to acquire more information about proposed upgrades to the break wall. It's huge what it's about It's not just a few rocks. Stakeholders insist more transparency is needed before major works take place, following community rallies to save the world-famous surf break, the iconic rock wall and Norfolk Pines. Samantha Crow joins us live now from the break wall. And Sam, has there been any update this afternoon? Well, Maddie, it will take some time for Council to make that submission to Transport for New South Wales. However, we have contacted them ourselves today, asking if those images will be made public and if they'll be made public before the work starts. We've been told that all community concerns are being addressed and that will be reflected in a public submissions report. Thanks for the update, Sam. Samantha Crow reporting live there from Port Macquarie. Firefighters are still investigating a fatal house fire in Ganelaba. Emergency services were called to a home on Dudley Drive. Nine fire trucks from Ganelaba, Lismore, Alstonville and Korokai arrived and found the home fully engulfed in flames. Fire crews controlled the blaze, forced their way inside and found the body of a woman who is yet to be formally identified. It's the second fatal house fire in two weeks on the north coast and the 15th statewide from just 12 incidents. Police are appealing for information after a 24-year-old was assaulted with a machete in Grafton. The incident took place on Tuesday afternoon at the intersection of Duke and Pound Streets. Paramedics treated the man for serious hand injuries at the scene. He was taken to Grafton Hospital before being airlifted to John Hunter Hospital in a stable condition. Police believe a red Subaru was seen at the time of the incident. 
Renters are bearing the brunt of a perfect storm of financial hits. A national report reveals one in five Australian households are experiencing energy bill stress. As prices for electricity and gas rise fast, the disadvantage is more widespread. Vietnam Veterans Day has been commemorated by local RSL sub-branches today. For John Lloyd, today is about remembering those who fell alongside him in the Vietnam War. After serving in the jungle battlefield, soldiers returned to a nation shocked by the war on their TVs. But there is a long-term price for war. The cost goes on and on financially, emotionally and socially. And it doesn't finish until those veterans have died. The Battle of Long Tan, which ended 56 years ago, saw the highest number of Australian casualties of any Vietnam War engagement. Well, it's time now for a quick check of the weather with Kirsty Fitzpatrick. And Kirsty, quite a nice day along the coast yet again. It was, Maddie, but a cool start for some of us. We even saw frost around parts of the coastline today. Good evening, everyone. In Taree this morning, we woke to just four degrees. Kempsey also had a low of four degrees this morning. Skies clear during the day, though, leading to mostly sunny conditions. And our daytime temperatures warmed up in that sunshine. The low 20s today in Coffs Harbour. Grafton reached 23 degrees and on the border at Coolangatta we had a top of 21 with mostly light westerly winds. These sunny and mostly settled conditions will take us all the way through the end of our working week tomorrow and into the weekend, but our UV rating will be on the rise as well. All the details coming up a little later on, Maddie. Get the hats back out. Good Thanks, Kirsty. See you later. Still to come in seven news, the tourism boost for the Barrington Coast and the all-star music lineup heading to Coffs. And a little later on this news house, Sydney wins the battle for the NRL Grand Final, but at what cost? A crime syndicate's busted by police. They see 650 kilograms of ice. NASA's rolled out its mega moon rocket as it prepares for a history-making launch, and the Queen targeted by a crossbow-wielding intruder. Welcome back. It's billed as three days of sonic mayhem and after three years of delays, the River Sounds Festival opens tomorrow in Bellingen. Baker Boy headlines the set list fresh from his performance at the Commonwealth Games closing ceremony. Other headliners include Brisbane Rockers regurgitator and rising indie star Alex the Astronaut. First Nations rapper named Dallas Woods. Uh, you want to come and check out 90s hip hop legends uh, Butterfingers. And over the weekend, the big ticket is definitely Baker Boy. River Sounds opens for three days at Bellingen Showgrounds tomorrow night and tickets are still available. The Barrington Coast has outranked hotspots like Byron and the Gold Coast in the latest tourism rankings. The region jumped to 42 in the top 100 global destinations, according to the Tourism Sentiment Index. The index has placed the area in the top 4% of most loved destination brands. The rankings are done every three months to reveal which destinations have strong reputations and tourism experiences. Barrington Coast beaches, surfing and fishing are behind the strong rankings. Still to come in 7 News, tickets for the Big Bash on the coast released and the elite squash players looking to boost their rankings. An international contingent has arrived at the North Coast Open, which is now a Squash Australia sanctioned tournament. The upgrade has attracted the world's best as they try to boost their global ranking. Two members of a huge Hong Kong team getting in some practice ahead of tonight's matches in the North Coast Squash Open. It's not often players of the calibre of Sin Yuk Chan wearing blue, ranked 39th in the world, are on the courts in Coffs Harbour. There's a juicy addition to the Coffs Harbour Running Festival and it has the attention of schools. Prize money is up for grabs and school teams are training hard in the final month, month before the popular fun run. These Bishop Druitt College primary students are part of the school's early morning running club in training for their team entry to the Coffs Harbour Running Festival next month. Still to come in seven years, we'll have your weather forecast. That's next with Kirsty. And in the national news now, just minutes away, the warning shot from the NRL about the future of the game's grand final. The lowest unemployment numbers in almost 50 years. And Donald Trump's delight at the fall of a Republican nemesis. 
This program brought to you by Port Home Zone, Hastings River Drive, Port Macquarie. Good evening everyone. Showers have started to make their way into southwestern New South Wales and Victoria under this trough and cold front. That frontal system will mostly be felt tomorrow as temperatures drop across both states. Clearer and more settled weather is on the way for Sunday that is before this new trough brings gusty showers early next week. But these systems do look to predominantly impact the south of the state so rainfall for the north coast is looking fairly slim for the coming eight days or so. To the end of our working week let's take a look at our forecast now. A partly cloudy day. We're expecting northwesterly winds in the morning tending southwesterly around lunchtime. Temperatures reaching the low 20s for most of us although as we saw previously there is a chance of some evening showers in the south for regions like Foster and Tari looking nice and dry and sunny in the north. On the waters tomorrow one to two metre seas highest in the south. Winds also picking up in the south as well. We're expecting south to southwesterly winds around 30 knots prompting a strong wind warning. On to our weekend clear skies and sunshine for the most part. Patches of frost but looking like a beautiful start to the weekend. Foster from 7 to 20, uh, Kempsey 4 degrees to 22 degrees. Wind, winds once again out of the southwest. So despite temperatures reaching the high teens, even into the mid 20s, it could feel a little cooler with the wind chill. Casino 25, the same for Evans Head and at Lismore. But it will be slightly cooler into Sunday. Again, some possible showers for southern parts of the coast around Foster. Nambucca heads a mild 20 degrees under partly cloudy skies. A light breeze and sunny for Coffs Harbour with 20 and at Grafton, 22 degrees. We are looking at a lovely Friday and a lovely weekend. A slight shower or two in the south though, Maddie. The coast is a place to be at the moment. It sure is. And always. <laughs> Thanks, Kirsty. <laughs> and that's all we have time for tonight. Right now though, 7 News at 6.30 with Dan. See you later.